Hello everyone, happy Friday, God bless you. Thank you for joining me for this Kingdom Marriage and Relationship Boot Camp. Yes, welcome to the camp. <laughs> God bless you all. I hope that these videos have been blessing you. I do upload them every other Friday, so this one's going up this week. I uploaded an, uh, one two weeks ago now, so make sure you check out the series. This is our third session. Um, and I know that God, I mean, your testimonies are blowing my mind. Um, and I thank you for sharing those. I want to continue. And we've been talking about um, principles, kingdom principles on how to, uh, you know, manage uh, the storm that comes against marriages because the devil is trying to distract the people of God um, from what is really important. And so I want to continue to share that. I have shared um, the, all the other principles and also from the first video, you can find out why I'm doing this and, and how God has qualified me to do, to do this. And I hope that you will be um, open to receive if you're new to these videos that you're open to receive and you're not just quick to dismiss because you never know who God is going to use to speak to your situation and to help you um, and so we're, we're, we know that God is calming the raging of the storm in every marriage that is under the sound of my voice now in the name of Jesus I believe God for it and for those who are single these are tools for you to keep in your toolboxes for your future. Yes, God is going to, if he has put it in your heart to marry, he is going to do it. But in this time of waiting, in your waiting season, you are to continually seek the face of God, to continually learn and grow in God so that you have all these keys and all these principles for when it does happen so that you don't go in, um, you know, not knowing what to do and then you, by mistake, you know, mess things up. So, um, I trust God over your life. And I know that this, uh, these principles today are going to help you. And so one of them, as I said in my last video is to discover your purpose, discover your purpose and busy yourself being about that thing that God is given you to be your purpose. And some of you have discovered your purpose, uh, but you're putting it on the back burner because now you're married. Oh, or you have discovered your purpose and you're putting it to the side because you're thinking, oh, I can't do this until I get married. God says, go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get started because until you discover your purpose and until you begin to shift your attention away from your problems, that problem will continue to be magnified until it takes over the life of the person that, that does that. Until you discover your purpose and shift your attention away from your problems, that problems will continue to, the problems will continue to magnify themselves until they take over your life. Somebody say, God forbid. I say, God forbid. And for some people, uh, you know, by the time they blink, years have gone by and they're a shadow of themselves because of depression, because of fear, anxiety, or sickness, or whatever it may be. And they, they discover that none of their dreams or the dreams that God had placed in their hearts have come to pass or have been realized. Oh my God, they're, they haven't advanced in their career. They have not advanced in their ministry. They have not done anything about their purpose. They can barely recognize themselves in the mirror because they focused on the problem and magnified the problem rather than magnifying the solution bringer rather than magnifying the problem solver rather than magnifying the God who is the way maker rather than magnifying the God who is the pathfinder rather than magnifying the God who is the destiny changer God is speaking to some of you who have discovered your purpose and you won't even do anything about it. He's also speaking to some of you who have not yet discovered your purpose, but you're not even praying about it. You have let the problem, the storm in that marriage, the storm in that relationship, you've allowed it to consume you. 
the kingdom principle is that while you're busy being about your father's business, hey, he's addressing your problems, my God. Because you're telling him, God, I'm going to do what you told me to do in spite of what I am going through. And that brings me to, to the next point. Get ready to work on yourself. Yes, be ready to work on yourself. Even in that marriage, you're not going to be perfect when you cut, get in there. So if you're looking for perfection, you've missed it. Sorry. Feel sorry for the men that are watching me now that have been waiting for the perfect woman. There is no such thing because you're not perfect yourself. For the women that have been looking for the perfect man, you're not perfect yourself. There's no such thing. You are going to have to work on yourself. And this is going to shock you. And it shocked me when the Holy Spirit helped me with this. <laughs> it says God is going to, he may have to change you first before he will change your situation. God, most of the time, will change you first before he will change your situation. So you say, oh, yeah, my husband is not doing what he's supposed to do. And I, I don't know if this marriage is going to survive or my wife hasn't been doing what he's, she's supposed to do. I don't know if I can deal with this. And God is saying, I want to work on you. Leave that person to me. I want to work on you. My God, get ready to work on yourself. I remember <laughs> I had this conversation with God and I am going to tell you this was a difficult time for me but you know and I had this conversation with God one day about a situation that was going on uh, with me at the time and and God let me finish moping around yeah he let me finish <laughs> listen he let me finish with my pity party yeah I, I had a big old party <laughs> and he said to me I made the situation the way it is, to see if you'd obey me anyway. Can you believe it? God allowed the situation that I was crying about, the trouble that I was concerned about. <laughs> he made, he allowed it to be the way it was, to see if I will obey him anyway, to see if I would do what he has called me to do anyway. To see if I'll go to when I was I was uh, in the choir, if I'll go to the choir practice, if I'll pray anyway, if I'll fast anyway, if I'll go to the reviver service anyway. If you drop out of school because you there's some challenge. He allowed it to see if I'll be about his purpose for my life, if I'll be about his business. Or if I'll focus on what I felt was going on in my life. And it, it then reminded me of Apostle Paul in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and, you know, Apostle Paul was telling God about this problem he had. Many people um, said he had high problem. We're not quite sure what the issue was. But let me read that to you because this will bless you. And I know that you've, you've heard this before. But I want the Holy Spirit to minister. I also want you to have your Bible available when, we're, when you're watching these videos because we're talking about kingdom principles, which means the Word of God is our, is our uh, compass. The Word of God is our standard. So you, we're going to need to read the Word of God. And if you're not just listening, but you're reading along and you're going back to meditate on the verses that I'll be presenting to you as the Spirit of God leads. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 6, it says, for, th for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. This was Apostle Paul speaking. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he hear it of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. 
For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, this was God, what God told him. He went to God three times to take this, this problem away. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Apostle Paul says, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Are you hearing God today? For when you are weak, then you are strong. Because he's doing a work in you. He's doing a work and you get ready to work on yourself, allowing God to work in and on you for him to begin to refine your mind, to heal your heart, Jesus, so that you can fulfill the call of God on your life. Because each one of us at the end of the day will stand before the judgment seat. Yes. And we will give account of what we did with the life he has given us, whether good or bad. We know the right things to do. Making the choice is left to us because God has given us a willpower. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. I hope that this is blessing someone today because I'm telling you. Revelation chapter 22 from verse 10. From verse 10 to 17. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 22 from verse 10. It says, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star, my God, and the spirit and the bright say, come, and let him that hear it say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. When you stand on judgment day, God will not ask you what your husband did with his life. He is not going to ask you what your wife did with her life. It will be all about you. Will your work speak for or against you? Make a choice today. Yes. Yes. Discover your purpose. And be about that business. It is the business of your father. Marriage is a part of your destiny. Don't let it engulf you. Don't let it consume you. So the point that you neglect the one who created you for a divine purpose. Oh, this video is getting too long. It's getting too long. So I'm gonna, the, the next point is focus on your focus. Oh, this one's gonna bless you. So um, the next time I upload, I will we'll be talking about that how to focus on our focus. Not like you've heard it before. It'll bless you the way God is speaking it to us, his children in this season. It will help you to weather the storm 
in your marriage. It will help you to weather the storm in that God-ordained relationship, to see God manifest. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he says in John chapter 17 and from verse 4, it says, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. And now, Father, glorify me with your own splendor, your very own splendor, the very splendor I had in your presence before there was a world, oh, before there was a world, before there was a world, glorify me with that splendor because I have completed to the last detail what you assigned me to do. What has God assigned you to do today? Shift your focus because as long as you focus on that problem, as long as you focus on that storm, you're going to always feel like that the problem is going to get bigger. But when you focus on what the purpose of God is for your life and you begin to allow him to refine you and to, and to remold you and to shape you into image of Christ, the image of Christ, through that problem, through that situation, when you release it to him and you focus on God, you will see great things happen. You'll be able to weather that storm. Because as I said in the first video and I think the second one, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Just don't magnify the problem. Magnify the God who has the solution to the problem. Focus on him. Focus on his assignment for your life. That is a way. A way to weather the storm. May God bless you. Thank you for joining me again. I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to join us on the prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget the prayer therapy video. I'm, I've um, uploaded the one for Wednesday. Go and check that one out. And also check out the other kingdom, um, um, kingdom marriage and relationship book camp videos. God bless you. I'll see you in my next video. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you.